people yearn for a sense of joy, a state of contentment, and the profound satisfaction that comes from the fulfillment in their lives. Imagine a reality where families lived together in peace and still found joy within their hearts. People work towards a brighter future, filled with optimism, happiness, and solace. They could find comfort within their communities as they bonded as friends and families. As the land breathed with fresh air and became a beacon of hope, it didn't matter what size, age, or background they were from, they were content. However, what began as a mere droplet of rain swiftly escalated, altering the course of their lives irreversibly. The emergence of dark, ominous clouds and a grey sky gave little hint of the catastrophic doom that was to ensue. From a seemingly innocuous beginning, Pakistan found itself in the grip of lethal and devastating floods. An event of such magnitude that it left a trail of destruction in its wake. Homes and crops were reduced to rubble and the contamination rendered natural sources of food and water unsafe for consumption. An estimated 33 million individuals were either displaced or severely affected, highlighting the sheer scale of the crisis. Moreover, the situation was exacerbated by the accelerated melting of glaciers, which intensified the flooding. The resulting deluge led to the destruction of over 2 million houses, leaving countless communities in ruins and signaling a dire need for immediate and substantial intervention to address both the short-term calamity and the long-term implications of such environmental disasters. With over $30 billion in the economy lost, respective villages were left with scraps and rubble which resulted from the disaster with no way to recover. The UN Secretary General emphasized the brutality of the damage as he said, And as we see here in Pakistan, I've seen many humanitarian disasters in the world, but I have never seen climate carnage on this scale. I have simply no words to describe what I've seen today. Yet, hope was not lost. Step by step, people of action came onto the scene with an objective. With the motto, Service Above Self, members of Rotary International, also known as Rotarians, are remembered as people of action. Collaboratively, they marshaled funds from their self-generated resources, advancing promptly to offer urgent disaster relief and sustenance. This included distributing rations, fresh food, and purified water. Their initial focus on recovery centered around establishing a sustainable future through comprehensive rehabilitation efforts. Gordon McAnally, the 2023 and 24 president of Rotary International, made a visit to the affected area. Behind me is hundreds and hundreds of square kilometers of what used to be usable, fertile agricultural land, but is now, because of the flooding, totally unusable. And even once the flooding recedes, it will remain unusable for the next five years. So not only have the people lost their homes, they have lost their livelihoods as well. And so this is why it is so important that we pledge to give to this cause. It may sound 
as if I am over-exaggerating, but this is a real need and it is a need that exists now. Pakistan is suffering because of climate change. Pakistan is paying the price for the behaviour of the rest of the world. So it is essential that we step up and make a commitment to help the people of Pakistan. The Rotary Pakistan Smart Villages program was initiated to foster enduring change and marked a significant turning point for the local communities. This initiative empowered those who had endured hardships, involving them directly in the rejuvenation process. By embracing ownership, the villagers actively shaped a future that was once beyond their grasp. Embodying Pakistan's inclusive spirit towards all ethnicities and backgrounds, the program focused on the development of Ramnagar and Jijanagar in the Sindh province, areas predominantly inhabited by the Hindu minority. After severe rains, water was everywhere. We were on the roads. I am thankful to Rotary Foundation Pakistan. The construction of new homes is both resilient and smart, drawing inspiration from the innovative shelter concept. These revitalized villages benefit from the comprehensive water, sanitation and hygiene programs. Additionally, they embrace sustainable energy solutions by integrating solar lighting, which is coupled with advanced water treatment plants to ensure access to safe, drinkable water. These elements form the cornerstone of the civil infrastructure enhancements in these communities. Smart village is commendable because it just, just not focuses on providing uh, shelter, it focuses on life ahead, creating a uh, sort of livelihood for them so that they can stand on their feet. I want to thank everyone here today, the Rotarians, the road reactors, the people of the community, the leaders in the community, about uh, this is an amazing initiative. The artwork here, it's their hearts have been poured into the community and into their homes. Parallel to these physical improvements, the social infrastructure is equally prioritized. Learning classes are introduced to bolster literacy rates, providing educational opportunities that were previously inaccessible. Telemedicine facilities offer vital healthcare services, focusing particularly on maternal and child health, as well as addressing other medical needs within these villages. The economic infrastructure covers cultivation, cattle farming, and artifacts. It led to the structuring of new skill development centers, which specifically focuses and promotes women empowerment and helps people grow essential skills such as wall matting and tile making for personal and professional grooming. I am engaged in sewing and patchwork art at our community center while I also teach the girls in our village. Rotary has taught us how this art can be a potential source of income for us. The vision of this project is to develop sustainable indigenous living and protecting the environment all over Pakistan and beyond with a clear vision to transform the flood-affected communities in Pakistan through a holistic program supported by innovation and technology. 
with the goal to at first initiate with 20 smart villages by June 2024. Rotary aims to further promote the concept of targeting a total solution for net zero emission. We look and hope for other notable humanitarian organizations and corporate sector leaders to join hands and create groundbreaking projects that make way for a future that is bright, nourished, and hopeful. What inspired you to start these smart villages? Uh, well, it all began in October 2022 okay. when we had these severe floods in Pakistan. Actually, floods started, began in July 22 and then in October uh, they were at its peak. And uh, that was the time when uh, you know, various ideas started coming in. And uh, uh, our Rotary's uh, perception had always been that we do projects which are sustainable long term and which can benefit the communities at large. Now as far as this, these 2022 floods are concerned, uh, it's being termed as the climate carnage and uh, for which Pakistan was not responsible. So it was uh, uh, due to the, uh, the uh, climate change processes uh, and uh, the carbon emissions which has been happening around the world. And uh, we have been talking of smart city, uh, cities uh, quite a lot, uh, you know, since quite long, but we haven't been talking about smart villages and smart towns. And I think if we really have to talk of uh, uh, transformation in communities, smart villages uh, are the solutions. What do you mean by the term smart? In short, it means that uh, the ideas you have in your mind, in your brains, the, uh, the innovation which an, every individual is capable of uh, uh, doing, combining that with technology, how to do it better, uh, not for yourself, but for your communities, for the people you are serving, and for the entire world ultimately. So that was that is the reason why we we named it as, as smart villages. The question is sustainability. To what extent do we plan on helping out these villagers to the point where they are independent and capable of handling their own affairs by themselves? Now, in this case, the sustainability comes in with the economic package, because we, without without empowering them in economic terms, uh, sustainability is not possible. And that is why that is, as I said, that is a key factor. That is the major area of our focus. Uh, again, talking of uh, homes, a very, which as I said, is a very small component. The other infrastructure, yes, they're important, but the biggest uh, interventions come through the economic part. Definitely. Now, talking of these villages, they already have tremendous potential. They have potential in agriculture. They have prot potent potential in the in the cattle farming. They have potential in these uh, articrafts or handicrafts, uh, you know, of, of the of the uh, as per the skills available. Right. So we are going to focus in all these three areas. And uh, another important component where we'll be focusing is towards the women on uh, economics, because we feel that in all these three areas, if we can empower the women of this area, uh, it would be much easier. To, to find uh, the real growth. At the heart of Rotary's ethos is the profound belief in transforming despair into hope and hope into lasting happiness. This belief is not just a guiding principle, it's a commitment to action, fostering positive change and bringing light to the darkest of situations. It is a magic of Rotary, stands as a beacon of optimism, driving forward with the mission to turn potential into progress and aspirations into tangible joy. It is an honor to be here today with Rotary International President Stephanie Urchek, 24 and 25, and Director Fez Kidway, and all of the wonderful Rotarians here in Pakistan. And my club has just donated money to have an economic development project here. 
my district has now been working on a few global grants that will support more smart villages. And I'm going home to report to everyone about how amazing the people in Pakistan are. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Yurchik, President of Rotary International for Rotary Year 2024-2025. I've had the great opportunity to be able to visit several of the smart villages here in Pakistan. Hearing about them is one thing, seeing them is really what really convinced me that this is an absolutely marvelous program, marvelous program. You know, when the villages are finished, they'll not only provide housing for families that need it, but they'll provide education, they'll provide clean water, they'll provide economic resources. So all in all, it's a marvelous way to see the magic of Rotary at work. And I'm so happy that on this visit, I was able to visit many of them. Today, Vicky and I had the opportunity to be part of the smart villages in Pakistan. The land we sit on a year and a half ago was completely flooded. And the great works of the Rotarians, led by Fez Kidwai, director, transformed this land into a village for 200 homes for over a thousand people, providing sustainable things that are gonna be able to be used for years and years to come to bring these people the opportunity to provide for themselves. This is a perfect example of what Rotary and what Rotarians do for their communities in their backyard and all around the world. I'm very grateful to be part of this amazing organization that does projects just like this. 